Our last topic in multi-criterion decision making is about special multi-criterion decision making or what I will call later as SDSS for special decision support system. So what we are actually dealing with right now are problems of special nature. Problems that actually require or use special data. In the example I have provided earlier, we are mostly talking about non-spatial problems, such as an apartment, right? Unless you think that maybe the distance to school or distance to park is something special, the problem is not really special per se. So a decision support system is the link between the decision maker and the computer, as we have seen. In this decision support system, the decision maker can provide the computer different alternatives, different criterion, different weights, different level of sensitivity, and the computer will probably provide the decision maker with different alternatives which are ranked according to his or her preferences. A special decision support system has a different type of architecture. And let's have a look here. First off, in this system, we have what is called a geodatabase. Now, many of you know what a geodatabase is, but for the one who don't know what it is, it's essentially a database that can maintain, if you want, or host, in a way, spatial data. Spatial data in maybe different formats, such as vector data, raster data, but also, of course, attribute data that are quite important. The geodatabase also allows different data set to be linked to one another through maybe a logical relationship. And finally, a geodatabase allows to do or conduct queries on the data. Now, any type of commercial GIS can serve as a geodatabase. The second part is the database management system. right? And that is quite, uh, you are quite familiar with that in a GIS because you can conduct queries, you can filter data and so on and so forth. What about the model-based management system and what does it do? A model-based management system in a decision support system allows you to conduct a lot of statistical analysis. Example could be regression analysis, could be to conduct a lot of simulations, could maybe do geostatistical modeling in case of let's say water contamination for instance and so on. Finally, a model based management system allows you to conduct forecasting in the event of simulation, right? We could also forecast what the future looks like. And you could also account for things like uncertainty. Lastly, the data generation management system is really the piece that will connect the user to this system. And that is essentially what the user will see. So this is maybe the interface we're talking about. What kind of dialogue do we have? Do we have a pull down menu? Do we have different queries? How easy is it for the user to interact with that system? That is the purpose of the data generation management system. Next, we are going to go a little bit deeper into the special decision support systems. There is one point that I would like to make, of course, is about the special decision support system. Many SDSS that are being created are typically for a particular purpose. For instance, we may have SDSS that are created for monitoring health outbreaks, like COVID-19, Ebola, and so on. You may have an SDSS that is being created to analyze statistical distribution of patients, for instance, in the health context, you may have a SDSS that has been created to measure the spatial interaction between demand and facilities, for instance. So there are many, many different examples, and I myself have actually developed many SDSS. But one thing that is important is to make the distinction between a loose coupling approach and a tight coupling approach. What are we talking about here? In a loose coupling approach, Essentially, you have maybe an interface that you interact with. Now, this interface could be as basic as a Python script, for instance, right? And it, as advanced as a full-fledged interface. From there, 
you do have files that are created. In our example that we have talked in spatial optimization, for instance, we do have a lot of what we call LP file or linear programming file. So those files are created. And then generally, what we would do, we would call a solver, like Cplex, Gurobi, Lingo, or others, that would solve the problem, and then some results would be returned to you. From these results, you can then visualize the results in a GIS. This is called a loose coupling approach. One of the problems, of course, is that it may be very messy, especially if you have a lot of simulation, you end up with many, many different files. A tight coupling approach, however, is much nicer, but it's also much more demanding from a programming perspective. It is generally a full interface. Now remember, this is done for a specific purpose. So yes, a GIS is actually a tight coupling system, but it has so many different things that it can do that it's not really specific. The user does not have to pass files, and the software can conduct simulation, what-if scenarios, and so on. So in general, the tight coupling is much better approach. But one of the things that you need to take into account is that maybe a tight coupling approach may have been programmed many years ago and it's not working anymore. While this loose coupling approach of exchange of files and so on may still be working 